Hi everyone, um, it's Eileen from Now There's a Crafty Idea and welcome to the channel if you're new. Thank you for all my new subscribers and thank you for all my old subscribers. Welcome, welcome. Um, I am starting the Ladybird book series. Now I've done these before um, and they were very successful. Everybody seemed to really like them. So I've been promising you that I would do some more and so I've picked out a few different books. Um, so I'm just going to quickly go through them and show you what I've got and then you can, you know, I'm not going to tell you each and every one, you can see for yourself. Um, these are just um, the Ladybird books that I've got in my stash and I just wanted to get working on these. So um, I am going to go through stage by stage and what I thought I would do is instead of just going through one book, I'm going to try and do a multi make on them. Um, but what I'm going to do is I, I, I do have different books at different stages so you'll have to excuse my, <laughs> my grubby hands I've been tea dying sorry um, but um, yeah so we're going to go through different different books that will be at different stages so we might flip from one to the other but what we're going to be doing is the same in all of them um, I mean different patterns and things but you know so let's just get started and um, I just thought you know if you want to craft along with me this would be a great time to go and get one of these books if you've managed to get one if you haven't I've got a couple of them still in the shop um, and then um, obviously if you're in England you can pick these up in charity shops uh, secondhand shops in in America I'm sure that you'll be able to get them off eBay um, so yeah i'm just gonna adjust my camera because i'm a little bit skew if and i can't stand being skew if there we go right okay so first of all these are ladybird books these are quite old um usually from the 60s and the um the 70s this one is 1967 and i've got a few later ones and you'll see let me see where's one of the later ones i'll try and find it this one Oh, so I'll show you the difference between these two. So these are both Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Now, um, this one is the older one. So let's I've, I've already taken this one apart. Let's find out how old this one is. So this one is 1969. And you'll see that the, the set out, they have a picture on one side and then um, they have text on the other. The newer ones, so this one is, let's see. Oh, I don't know how to work that out, but these are usually from around the 80s, 70s, 80s. But you'll see that they have a mixture of text and um, pictures on um, both, on, both on one page. So it's it's not a huge difference. The artwork is still lovely. The stories are still lovely, and you know it's they're they're, they're all worth using. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to prepare the um front of the well the whole journal these are all children's books they're going to be grubby they're going to have um bits of damage done to them you know if we were going to be dissuaded by that we'd never make junk journals so let's just get on with it a very good way of trying to get off some of the um some of the grime if it bothers you i mean if you like it just like that to me that's not a problem i don't mind it at all but if you've got a particular mark let's find one that's got a particular mark now this one you can see this has got a coffee mark on it now it's not ideal but it kind of tells the story of the book you know the book's history so let's just gently go over it with a, a rubber now you don't want to press too hard because these covers are not um, gloss covers they are matte and you, if you rub too hard you're going to rub the, um, the actual picture off now that that coffee ring I've already had a go at this and it's not coming off but if you just gently go over the whole cover you're gonna just clean it up just a little bit and it's gonna come up a little bit brighter so let's do this puss in boots personally I, I wouldn't bother because I like the the grunge but if you if that bothers you now you can see the difference there I don't know I hope you can see that on camera so if you just very gently very lightly go over with a rubber and you can just lift the, the picture well, that's what I'm doing anyway I mean you may have a different way of restoring these pictures if you do give me a um, comment and let me know because you know 
it all helps but you can see there how it's just slightly lifted that I will go over the rest of the cover but I can't actually see any actual like pen marks now on the inside of these you can see this one that has a little bit of it must have been stored somewhere damp but that's okay because we're going to cover that the book itself is solid and it's not damp at all so it's fine now let's see I'm just checking the pages quickly because I want to make sure that there's no writing or anything on the inside pages because when you do get these books sometimes kids have written in them and you know it's the nature of kids sometimes it's in pencil which is great because you can rub it out sometimes it's in pen which is not so great but you can get um pen erases i think um or if you're not bothered about it if you're quite happy for this the, the um, book to tell its own story just leave it it's it's fine i mean sometimes you get them on the inside cover you see somebody's drawn on that with pencil and ink and i don't think there's any more in that one but this one which i got now this one's a, a recent edition um and i've just written on there so i know how many pages it's got you can see this one's got a lot of pencil marks on i'm not bothering about these ones i'm not going to bother touching them because that's going to get covered and then obviously that page i won't use so it's no bother and then i've already checked this one i don't think there's any more pencil marks in there but as we go through as we start to make them we'll find out if there's any damage just give yours a visual check um, and remove any that you can and you know if there's a pen mark and you can't remove it or if there's any other kind of mark and you can't remove it we'll cover it up with some decoration because this is a journal we're going to stick things in so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the inside of the book from the, the cover now these are pretty simple because they're not very you can see they're not very um hard spines so we're literally just going to it's like any book if you've ever made a, a journal with a book you know the procedure and we can keep that spine because you know you could use that um, maybe as a i don't know maybe we could use it as a a bookmark you know or pop it onto a belly band that would be interesting wouldn't it i've kept a few of them um haven't used any just yet though no. maybe we'll do that in this series we'll, we'll think of a way of using it because you know use everything that you've got so th this is basically what you're left with now we are going to cut this out but for now i'm going to leave that because i am going to do a cover i'm going to show you how to make the covers properly and then you've got this now on the older books these are in signatures and you can cut the signatures apart on the newer ones they tend to be glued in which is you know you just rip the pages out as is so this was one of the older ones and i'm just going to cut the strings at the middle of the signatures they're pretty easy to do usually these books have been that well loved that the strings are just loose anyway um and you've just got to snip them i have had oh I've had such a week. First of all, I burnt all my thumb and, <laughs> and it's killing us. But um, it's it's grubby. You will have to excuse me, hands. They're absolutely grubby off tea dying because I spent the whole day tea dying yesterday. Um, but yeah, I burnt my thumb. That was the first thing that happened. And then we've decided to do some decorating this week because um, my husband's off work and I'm off work. <laughs> so I thought... We'll get some decorating done that'll be great you know we, we need to get some stuff done so we decided to go to our local b and q and we were looking for some nice paint now me hallway and me stairwell and me um me downstairs and upstairs hallway me stairwell they're, they're all you know it's quite a big space and we, we did the downstairs and we've done it in like a, a nice gray i fancied just you know i'm not a I'm not a grey person normally, but I just fancied grey and um, <laughs> grey and turquoise, which I love together. So 
that was a nice grey that we did but then when we went to use it for the upstairs it was too dark there's more light downstairs so I was like well let's get just a lighter grey so off we go to B&Q and um, for some reason I'm wearing my brand new jeans and my sketcher shoes <laughs> which are not cheap and um, I went to pick up a, a tin of paint off the shelf which was a very very light grey it was a lovely shade and the handle pulled out and the whole thing fell at my feet exploded and covered me in grey paint and when I say covered I mean halfway up my legs my feet completely gone oh. <laughs> so I was standing in the middle of being q not knowing what to say and Chris was just looking at me as if to say what have you done <laughs> And my eldest daughter was there with me and um, I'm standing there trying not to move because I've got paint everywhere and I'm thinking I need some help Jenny. She's like yeah wait a minute mum I just want to get a photograph. <laughs> I was like yeah yeah that's the world we live in today. <laughs> she couldn't do anything for laughing. Chris walked away because he was just he was just done. <laughs> he was laughing that much and um, <laughs> They went and got me an assistant anyway. I couldn't move because I was stood in a puddle of paint. If I'd moved, I would have gotten paint even like everywhere else. And I could feel it seeping into my shoes and, oh, and on my legs. I was, oh my gosh. It could only happen to me, folks. It could only happen to me. Oh, it's just absolutely done. <laughs> Oops. No, don't worry because we're going to paste these together with some um, tape so all I've done now is I've just pulled all the pages I've pulled the signatures apart so we've got single pages now your first couple of pages you're going to have to make your mind up whether you want them I tend to leave this page out one because there's usually a nice image that I want to use there but I don't want the rest of this so I usually keep that out even though it's the start of the story I, I don't mind what I normally do is make a tag out of it so I'll, I'll back it with some nice paper and then that can sit in whatever page I put there so you've still got the, the, the start of your story. So usually these books have about 24 pages so let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, now sometimes you've just got to pull them apart gently, 5, 6, 7, Eight, Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. I think I missed one in there when I was counting. So yeah, there's twenty-four pages. The last page. Let me find this. It's a lovely image. I don't want to take it out of the book, and we can cover this with something. So twenty-four makes makes a great number because it's easy to um, to kind of share these out. Now, if you're going to do one signature in your book, then you just you're gonna t you're gonna do this differently i'm putting two signatures in mine and i'll tell you why these books are small and once you start putting extra pages in they do tend to fill up really quick and i like a chunk you know i like a chunky journal <laughs> but i tend to do it in um in two signatures because i think that because the books are quite small i mean how big are they let's see let's see where's my rule gone there we go these books are approximately 12 centimetres which is just under five inches <coughs> excuse me by 18 centimetres which is approximately seven and a quarter inches so they are smaller than your general your normal um, journal but I, I kind of like the size of them they're a nice hand size and um, so yeah I think that they the, the can take two signatures so 
this is the complicated bit it's not that complicated the reason i've pulled the signatures apart and i know you were thinking why are you pulling the signatures apart you're going to be putting them into signatures it's because if you want the story in the right order then you have to pull all the pages apart now what we're going to do is we're going to split this in two one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so we've got twelve in each signature which is going to translate to six six pages for your signatures now this is what you've got to do so we're going to put this second signature aside now i'm going to split this in half again one two three four five six now when we start to put these together i'm just going to pull these bits of glue off here this is the way you put them together so you, you split them in half and then you start from the inside to put your signature pages together and that way it keeps your story or whatever it is that you you know if it's a story or if it's something else because you can get factual books and, I, and one of the ones i'm doing is actually a bird book um but generally you know they've got a, a written order so you want to try and keep that just check up the side of the page by the way just in case there's any bumpy bits off the, the glue the, the side of the page doesn't have to be perfectly straight it's fine because we're going to stick it together right so let me just move everything out of the way because you know i'm simple minded <laughs> when it comes to working things out so i have to have everything very clear right so this is your 12 pages we've split them into six i'm folding i'm turning those ones over and putting them there now we're going to take the first two and that's going to be our first signature page so what we're going to do is I've got some washi tape I'm just going to move these up a bit now pick whatever washi tape you want if you want to match it to your story that's great if you're not bothered just pick a pretty one um, I'm just picking this one and I'll tell you why I like the pattern on it I kind of do and I like the colours and also you're not really going to see that much of it you know um because it's going to be right inside the signature but i kind of like the geometric shape especially because it reminds me of his trousers a little um so we're just going to measure that out now because this is washi tape you know where it's like it's not that strong so I'll strengthen it that's what i'm going to do anyway if you've got a really strong washi tape that you think is going to be okay then you know just use that it's fine or you don't have to use washi tape you can use um any other kind of tape to secure this you could even if you wanted to you could even use fabric um i wouldn't use fabric because i think it adds too too much bulk and when you're trying to sew your signature in the least bulk you can get is better now i'm just going to press that down onto that one side and this is how i do it just going to measure it up and I'm just going to I'm trying to match them up as much as I can and get them in line because when it comes to your book you're going to be able to see it just measure the the edge of the pages up together and then we put another strip of this on and now these are quite nice to do especially you know if you're just sitting there with nothing else to do um or if you just want a, a nice day crafting you know this is a nice thing to do it's one of those things like when you're doing a collage that you can just sit and do you know maybe put some music on or listen to an audio book it's it's fun as long as you've got everything in order <laughs> which i tend to struggle with so yeah so i'm, I'm standing in the middle of being q people all around us covered in paint my daughter's taking pictures my husband's gone to get help <laughs> and all i can think of is that's a really nice shade of gray actually <laughs> oh my gosh i just honestly i am hopeless you know i was just so done honestly it's just been one of them weeks where i just thought to myself i'm, I'm done my thumb's killing off being burned <laughs> 
the decorating didn't go as, as planned so you know we had we had a lot more to do than we thought so I was absolutely shattered after moving everything last week for work <laughs> and we're going to the Harry Potter experience this weekend so I've got a long road trip ahead of us which I normally enjoy but I think I'm going to just sleep through <laughs> and just wake up when we get there um, so there you can see so you've got page 16 and page 18 now that's going to be the center of your signature so we get the next two and you can see where this is going this is just how I keep the story straight I'll do one more and then we're going to move on there we go right okay um, where's my washi tape so this woman comes along with a trolley looking absolutely sick as a chip that she's now got to <laughs> mop paint up off the floor which you know if anybody's ever decorated you know it's not easy <laughs> and this silly woman standing there covered in paint and <laughs> then this other woman walks past and she's like oh you need to instagram that i'm like seriously seriously you walk past someone in trouble full, full of paint and the first thing you think of is that's instagrammable i've no doubt i'm probably on instagram if you look for a silly woman covered in paint you'll probably find a picture of us <laughs> i know my, my daughter took a few <laughs> so the woman says oh well um um what happened i went like well you know the the handle fell out of my hand and it just fell <sighs> and she was like okay i says is, is the toilets open because let's not forget we're in the middle of a pandemic as well so all this while i'm wearing a mask <laughs> and um she says oh no i'm sorry the public toilets are not open oh well that was it i was like oh god <laughs> by this time i was just thinking i'm i'm so done with this i'm going to just walk home because i can't go in the car like this she went but we can take you to the staff toilets i was like oh thank you so much and i'm thinking my new jeans me sketches if i can just get them washed out quickly i might be able to get all the paint off because you know emulsion paint if you get it when it's wet you can sometimes get it out but if you let it dry you've got no chance so um yeah <laughs> So she comes along, she, she like, she tries to get the, the most of the um, paint off us and, and my husband as well, trying to get the most of the paint off us so I can actually move because I'm dripping paint at this time. <laughs> and, um, and I just gave up trying to get off my shoes, I just took them off. So I'm now standing in the middle of being queue, surrounded by people, covered in paint, barefoot. The only saving grace was that I had a mask on and I don't think anybody could recognise me. I was like, oh no, this just like, does it have to happen to me? So now we have page 14 and 20. So I have to do this the other way. <laughs> um, so now, hopefully... And we put this in this way so now this would be 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 so you can see how where we're going with this why we have to split the the pages in two and then in two again and i'll do one more um <laughs> and then we'll move on so <laughs> so yeah um so I, I, I walked off to the toilets with this, this other um, colleague um, of the, the place, you know, she was like, oh, I'll take you through to the toilets. I was like, oh, thank you so much. So she took us through to the toilets. So the first thing I did when I got in there was, of course, I had a long T-shirt on and a cardigan, a long cardigan, was I took my jeans off because I had to get them wiped, washed out. You know what I mean? I had to get the paint out of them while it was still wet. So I'm standing there. <laughs> um in a t-shirt and a long cardigan <laughs> and, and nothing else washing my shoes and my jeans out in the sink thankfully there were staff toilets so the public couldn't come in but in walks this poor woman who was getting ready for our shift and she just took one look at me and she was like 
um i went i've spilled paint all over us i've had to take my jeans off i'm sorry <laughs> she was like it's okay it's okay <laughs> don't worry about it but oh bless that the look on her face and i was just done by this time <laughs> honest to god i was just so done um so i managed to wash most of the the paint out of my jeans but my shoes would have gone wrong i knew that from the start you know i knew i wasn't going to get out the shoes but, <laughs> but yeah i uh <clears throat> i managed to get most of it um washed out i used the hot water in soap thankfully there was a big soap dispenser there so there was plenty of soap and um and i got the worst of it out my jeans <laughs> but then i've got wet jeans so <laughs> Oh, it's not over yet, folks. <laughs> so I had to put <laughs> my wet jeans back on after wringing out as much water as I could. And if you've ever had to put wet clothes on, you know what that feels like. Yeah, <laughs> it was wonderful. <laughs> and this is in the middle of like a rainstorm that we've been having, which is absolutely freezing. And the store itself wasn't very warm so i'm like starting to shiver by this time and i, I gave up on the shoes i knew i wasn't going to wash it out of there i just tried to get them to the point where i could walk in them so i put the shoes on and i'm like right i better go now because <laughs> i've been in there for ages and i went to walk out and when i pressed down on the shoe well you, you can guess what's going to come can't you yes i had washed out the worst of the um the paint but i'd also watered down the paint that was had managed to seep into the shoe so when i pressed my foot down paint just squidged out the side i was like oh <laughs> so i quickly took them off got loads of um paper towels and cleaned up the floor as best i could in the toilets which i managed to get most of it off but then I thought, well, I, there's just I can't wear them. I'm just going to have to go barefoot. <laughs> so I held my head up high, pulled my big girl pants up, walked out of the door and walked through the hall of B&Q full with people. For some reason, everybody wanted to do DIY that day, DIY that day and walked through them as though I was the Queen of England. And I just <laughs> walked to the door of the store. Chris, my husband, was waiting, but he hadn't been served yet. And I was like, just give me the keys to the car. And he went, you can't walk across the car park barefoot. I was like, uh, yes, I can. <laughs> so I got to the door and I, I couldn't, and he was right. I couldn't walk across the car park barefoot. So I just, I got to the road and then I just had to put the shoes on and leave big squelchy puddles <laughs> of water dead paint all the way across the car park so i took the shoes off when i got to the car and, and i couldn't find anything else to put on but some plastic bags i was like oh my goodness by this time yeah the looks i was getting right i'm gonna finish this signature because otherwise i'd get myself confused the looks i was getting oh you've seen nothing like it but i thought you know girl you got yourself into this the best way to deal with it is chin up and get on with it so that's what i did <laughs> oh it was just now i look back on it, it was hilarious but at the time i was mortified i was absolutely mortified now i'm laughing about it i think it's hilarious and it'll go down in the annals of all the stupid things i've done in my life because there's a few <laughs> So yeah, that was my adventure with B&Q and um, <laughs> got home, straight to the washing machine, stripped off, put everything in the washing machine and you'll be pleased to know I saved the jeans. They're not perfect, they've got like a, a faint shadow, so they're now, no longer my best jeans, which they were brand new, they are now my work jeans. <laughs> but that's okay because I get paint and stuff on me at work anyway because if you know if you followed the channel for a while you know I work um, in a craft department um, for adults with learning difficulties so I'm always getting myself covered in glue and paint and all sorts and it's um I don't mind it's fun so that's what's going to happen to the jeans from now on <laughs> Oh, so now I've got to go out and buy a new pair of jeans and I need to buy a pair of shoes and the sketches oh, 
they're so expensive luckily they were my old pair that i've had for nearly a year and um but they're the most comfortable shoes i've ever had so i'm gonna have to go and get myself a new pair of them <laughs> but of course we're going away aren't we and they are my shoes that i use for walking when we're like doing touristy walks and things like that and um now i don't i don't have anything but trainers so i'm gonna have to go shopping tomorrow morning to get some shoes to go away with tomorrow afternoon oh here i'm i was just like yeah just let's get the end of this year please <laughs> let's just get this year to end. so that was my little adventure my um my fun times with being cute do it yourself i certainly did <laughs> and we decided to go with a different shade i thought i cannot walk up them stairs looking at that shade of paint every day knowing that i was covered in it so i had to get a different shade <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm not allowed back in being here anymore my husband says he's, he's not taking us ever again <laughs> i don't blame him <laughs> i wouldn't take me either <laughs> So I hope you had a good giggle at that because I'm having a good giggle at it now. <laughs> now I am at the time I wasn't. I was mortified. Oh, if it could only happen to me, honestly. It's just, this is the kind of week I've been having. <laughs> so you can imagine. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that was fun. <laughs> But it was a nice shade of grey. <laughs> I just couldn't bear to look at it again. I think I would just have nightmares every night walking up the stairs with that shade of grey on there. Yeah. But anyway, we, we did. We've got a different shade of grey and it all looks very lovely. And now I can put up my new curtains and everything that I've um, had sitting in a cupboard for a, a month because um, we just hadn't had time to get round to it. But yeah, fun times. Chris says just today he says I'm, I'm gonna pop out to the shops because I need to get a few bits and I was like all right where are you going he was like well I need to go to the range and I need to go through to Team Valley and I might pop and get some more paint because I think it might need another I was like no nope, you can stop right there I'm going nowhere near being cute <laughs> I'll stop in and make videos because <laughs> I can't yeah I can't <laughs> I'm never going to being cute ever again for the rest of my life <laughs> When I was walking out as well, I went past the last. It was cleaning it up. I felt so, so bad about it. Because <laughs> um, it, it wasn't, you know, it, it, it wasn't the um, paint, the handle didn't fail. It was just I didn't pick it up properly. My fingers failed, which is what's been happening with this blooming silly arthritis. Um, and that's how it, it dropped. So it wasn't like... <laughs> It wasn't the store's fault, but this poor lass, I walked past her and I was like, um, I just wanted to let you know that I am really, really sorry. <laughs> and she was like, oh, don't worry about it. It's fine. These things happen. And I'm thinking, I bet you're under your breath, you're cursing us for having to clean that room because it's not going to come out easily. And um, yeah, poor lass. If it, it, you know, I, I am heartfelt sorry for her because... Uh, I wouldn't like to have to, to clean up that spill and I was the one that caused it had I not been in wet jeans and with no shoes I would have stayed to help <laughs> I had to get home as quickly as I could because yeah so that that's um that's my week so far <laughs> and then of course you know we're due to go to um the Harry Potter studios in London and our region has been put in tier two which means that we're, we're still we are quite high risk but we can still travel in and out of the region um and we leave tomorrow which is what day is it today it's thursday today i'm filming this on a thursday so we leave tomorrow um which is friday and they're talking about possibly changing our um, risk status so i was like you know what I'm leaving I'm gone <laughs> our cases have gone down I know they've gone down I wouldn't travel and put anybody at risk if I didn't think that it was safe um, and we're going to be wearing our masks everywhere and but the thought that they might say to us you cannot travel outside the region I was like mm -mm. 
before that starts i'm moving out of the region <laughs> but then i might not get back in when i come home so if i'm missing next week <laughs> you know i'm stuck somewhere in quarantine <laughs> hopefully i'll be stuck in the harry potter studios and i'll have to live there for a few days that that'll be nice won't it two weeks in harry potter land it'd make up for uh for the whole debacle of this week <laughs> just but we got confirmation today off the um of the hotel we're stopping in and um and they seem quite hopeful and happy and everything seems fine down there and they've said that the covid risk is fine um we're on the same tier so it doesn't matter um i wouldn't have gone into a lower tier district because obviously you know that's just dumb and you just risk everybody else's health by doing that but we're on the same tier so i'm quite happy with that oh i'm stuck so yeah if i'm missing next week i'm either quarantined somewhere or i'm in a straight jacket either way send chocolate because <laughs> i need chocolate i'm going to get the biggest bar of honey duke's chocolate that i can find and i'm just going to sit and eat chocolate for two weeks <laughs> yeah so yeah i'm having quite the adventure it's been a fun week off so far <laughs> how's your week been come on tell us drop me a drop me a comment and tell us if you've had any adventures of your own this week because i was but i was like saying last week that I, you know things have been quite boring because we can't go anywhere or do anything well i've made up for that this week have you done anything interesting as have you had any little adventures like mine let me know <laughs> oh i hope it wasn't as embarrassing as mine <laughs> so this is the last page this is our last oh make sure i've got that folded properly i've just pulled it back there we go and just give it a good crease there we go now let's check our work so we should go from six Oh, where am I? Eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, and sixteen. So that's the one signature done. So you've got six pages for your signature already. And then, of course, we'll do this exactly the same with this. We'll split it in two and we'll do the signature like that. I'm not going to do that on camera because. You don't need to see that to be honest so the one that i've already done let me find it let me find it is this one now it's called um the ladybird book of garden birds and this is the only one that's not a storybook i think the rest of them are so we've got these are the pages from the front that i didn't want to put in and then these are the pages the two signatures all finished and you can see I've done exactly the same. I've kept them all in um, order. Um, it doesn't really matter that much with this one because like I say, it's not a story, but these pages correspond. So this is the wren and the great tit, and that's the wren and the great tit. You don't want to start like changing things. There's the magpie and the jay, magpie and the jay. And yes, they're going to be separated by other pages that we're putting in, but it's just nice to keep them all the same. This one's from St. Anne's Middle School. I don't know what. 1967 Bo Boodle, Boodley Boodley never heard of it so the next thing I want to do is we can choose some papers to put in um, now I've done my coffee dye where did I put them I'm just going to move a few things let me just move these things here and right so First of all, I found this. Now this was a find. This stuff, it's Basildon Bond. I don't know if everybody knows what Basildon Bond is, but it's it's the best kind of stationery you can get. And I got this from a charity shop, and it was brand new with the packaging on. It had never even been opened. And look at this paper. Isn't this paper lovely? And you've got your lined page for when you want to write on it. Um, I don't know what. I think that's supposed to be a blotter page. Now I'm going to take a couple of pieces of this out because it's gorgeous paper and I think it should be just about the right size for these books. Let me just check. 
slightly too long but we can trim that and let's just see oh yeah that's going to be perfect so we just got to trim a little bit off the um off the height i'm going to try and get it as lined up as i can so there's one page and here's the second one now we've got six pages from the book itself so this is page seven we're doing two signatures so it's up to you how many you want to put in um i'm going to highly decorate these so i'm not going to put as much in each signature as, not, as i would normally put in let me just find the rest of my papers right i'm just going to move a few things around i've got some nice decorated papers here and these are all just the nice that's like a leather wow don't want a vellum oh that's pretty isn't it i like that i think these were from a card pack oh gosh some of them are just a bit too much but let's see if we can find a nice one i kind of like that one yeah we'll go with that butterflies and birds they go together so this is just one piece I like putting the decorative papers in these because I think that these books can really take a lot more than just your, um, your coffee dyed. And so I've got another notepad that I got and I like that. So I'm going against my usual grain which is grunge everything up. I'm going to leave some white space in this one. I am I swear. I know that you're saying I'm not. I am. Um, I don't want any of them and then I've got some nice music paper I don't know if I want that one in it's a bit no oh I'm just looking through all the bits I've got now these six by sixes turn out nice in these they turn into skinny pages but I think I'll keep them for decorating this stuff is great now this is it's um it's a very heavy paper but it's almost like um oh what's the word it's not almost like a fabric i don't know where i got it from i found it in the bottom of my stash i must have had it for years and just forgotten about it um i haven't got a clue what it is um i just know that it's it feels gorgeous and it's good for writing on and it's it's a heavy paper without being too bad so you can get you know you can really give it some some you know tough uh, some tough work on it and you can get the, your, your pockets and that are great on there so I'll put that aside because I've got them in and I've got some just some coloured papers so let's see I just want to pick Should I, that's, a, that's a nice textured paper it's grey oh no we don't want grey or after my week <laughs> I like the blue because that's like blue of the sky isn't it it's a lovely color blue and yellow not so much in this one I don't think what else do we have we have a darker blue I think I'll go with that and then a purple no that's a nice piece right okay so put them aside and there we'll get our coffee dye pages and there were oh i've got some vellums as well so i'm going to put a vellum in i think i kind of like that one it's kind of lined and it's it's a nice vellum but it's really great for writing on this one so this one can go in as well it's got a lovely texture that one now i coffee dyed a whole bunch of paper and what i did was i cut them before I coffee dyed them because I wanted them to have all the grungy edges because a few of the papers that I'd previously coffee dyed these ones I did cut these down but you can see that I've lost the grungy edge so I'm gonna um I've cut your papers down um the size that I cut mine to I've got it written down is 22 and a half by 17 and a quarter now the best way to find out what size you want is to get one of these once you've put it together and measure it 
and then just you know cut your papers to that size all the ladybird books are the same size so if they're always going to be the same so let's see how many did we have we've got six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve now eleven same on that side about yeah uh, one two let's go through are these the ones with the lace on three four I did have some different colors but i don't know what i've done with them aha there they are five Six. Oh, look at the grunge on that one. I love that. Brilliant. You can see why I've got absolutely mucky hands. And then I've got some of these, which are smaller pages, but I wanted to use them. So I've got one, two. And bearing in mind, I've got nine books to do. So I've got to be careful how much I put in each one. I mean, I can always coffee dye some more. Just it's I've got these prepared. One, I've got. I'm sure I've got some of these folded over. No, okay. So we're going to put a dotty one in as well. So that's two of them. Right. Okay. Let's get folding. And then we'll cut those other coloured ones as well. Okay. I love putting the signatures together and like figuring out what goes where it's just so much fun oh look how grungy that turned out that's amazing I love it hey sweetheart oh food these are good knees right let's get these nice yellow ones done I was just telling everybody about me um me being here experience yesterday <laughs> he just walked away from me i think he was just totally embarrassed <laughs> i'm not allowed back in being he said right these ones oh i wanted to tell you about these these um is an experiment when i did coffee dye them all i did was i got some paper and i used my edge punch down both sides to make kind of like a paper lace and then you just lay it over because i have to when i'm coffee dying i have to use the oven method method it's too damp where i live we live too close to the sea to do the you know the tub method not without having to put loads of heat on and at the minute it's just you know it's in between seasons so it's either too hot or too cold so anyway i do the um oven method so all i do is i lay them across and then you just put them in the oven let them bake and then you take these off and you've got these lovely patterns and you can do this with lots of things i mean when i was doing oh, i don't think i've got one to hand let me see let me see aha see i did some with nice leaves on so i cut out sh shapes of paper leaves and then i just um, lay them on the paper and then you get these like these lovely imprints of them so it's great so that's how I do them and then of course you're left with these lovely um really grungy pieces of paper lace and it's you know you can use these for belly bands and all sorts of great so that's my little experiment um give it a go because I really enjoyed it and it was fun so let's get the rest of these folded it's something that I think I'm going to do a lot more of I mean it can be tedious sitting cutting out all the shapes obviously the with the edge punch it's it takes you minutes to create a few of these um, and you can use the same ones about four times um, and that you know the, the, they're not too fragile once you've, they've been tea dyed four times it's, they're okay so you don't need to cut like enough out for every page but I mean look it's not too fragile and it's um it's bendable it's movable it's still fine um, and it's, oh, it's so lovely and grungy isn't it love them love them um, but yeah if you're going to be cutting the shapes out like I did with the leaves um, it can get a bit tedious sitting cutting out loads of shapes um, so just keep in mind you can reuse them you don't have to do the, um, you don't have to cut out a hundred 
sh um, shapes um, you can actually cut out about seven or eight and just keep reusing them as you go right now this one I wanted to be a fold over I didn't do any of my dotty ones yesterday I should have done some more dotty ones so let's I want it to be just slightly smaller. There we go. Make sure I've got it all lined up. There we are. Now, we've got our two signatures. Oh, we'll cut these ones out while we're on. Or I'll forget and then they'll get left out, like I did with the last one I did. Right, now. 17 and a half was that right? I've put marks actually so I'm just going to follow me marks 17 and a quarter I think it was on a half this cutter is getting worse I'm going to have to order the, the blade for it I'm just going to trim the bits off sometimes it cuts perfect and it doesn't catch at all other times it's just a nightmare and 22 and a half see it's just sometimes it just has loads of crumbs on the edge right next one I love this colour isn't that gorgeous it's like a turquoise blue it's my favourite colour turquoise it's such a, a rich, beautiful colour. Come on, open up. And there we go, just about there. We can always um, cut them down if we need to anymore. Right, let's get this pulled away. Get this trimmed off. Right, now let's get these folded. I mean, you can, like, when you measure your, your pages, this is the same as any book that you're taking apart, really. It's not just down to the, the ladybird ones, any book that you want to take apart and use the pages out of. But um, if you want them to hang over the edge of your cover, because some people like that, they like the, the insides to be proud of the cover. You know, just cut them accordingly. Right. Now, let's get our two signatures right. So, we're going to put the specialty papers there. And then one, two, three, four. Now, let's see. So that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I think that's quite enough. So let's put these together. Now, um, that's going to be my first page. So I'm not going to... That could be a nice yellow to go with that knit. Yeah, that really works well. I like the colours together. And then maybe this blue, because it's almost the same blue... There's the sky there, isn't it? Isn't that lovely? Yes, we'll have that. And then I think because we've got a black crow, let's go white page. That one needs cutting down a little bit, but I'll do that in the knit. And then I need to get a couple more of these coffee dyed in. And then, oh, we'll do a spotty one. Right, now let's go back through and figure out where we're going to put everything else. That could look quite nice as the half page there. I quite like the idea of that rose being on that blue. Although that's going to be too new new together. I might change that out for some grunge. Maybe change my mind on that and put that there because that's quite a dark page and that will balance that up a little yeah okay 
So we've got one, two, yep, right. What we're going to put in, where we're going to put these. So maybe the stationary paper can go in there. You see it's got the watermark on and everything, I like that. And then, that might look quite nice next to the, um, the lace paper. Right, okay. Let's have a look. Yeah. Yeah. No. Nope. That needs to be changed around. Where have we got? You know what I might do? There we go. Okay. No, I don't want to just change that blue, but I will put it there. Right. <laughs> changing my mind, changing my mind. Okay, let's go. Let's see. Okay, that's okay. You can always decorate the other side of that. Like the birds like that that looks nice okay yep i like the grunge now lovely 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 yep that works i like that so that's our first signature done Right, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to do the same with this signature. It's going to be exactly the same process. I'm going to leave it there and then the next video we'll start work on the cover um, because that's the next thing that we need to get done and then we can start decorating. Well, yeah, we can. Okay, so thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've had a giggle about my little story. <laughs> I certainly have. It's been, yeah, it was fun <laughs> after the fact. Um, this is going to be a chunky monkey you can see already it's going to be lovely um, so yeah if you've enjoyed it please do drop a like it really helps um, when those little YouTube bots go out looking for content the more likes I get the better um, and drop me a comment let me know how interesting your week's been if, if you've got a better story than mine please do share I'm sure everybody will appreciate it I know I will and um, take care stay safe don't drop paint on yourself and happy crafting. Bye.